Hello everyone, my name is Wei Zhou Zhang, and I'm currently a fourth year PhD student here in CPAS. My advisor is Dr. Yu Hao Zhang. So my topic for CPAS conference is uh, overvoltage ruggedness and dynamic breakdown voltage of P-gate gain hams in high frequency switching up to megahertz. There will be four parts in my presentation. So in the introduction part, I will start with a discussion on the single event overvoltage ruggedness of gain hams and followed by this uh, dynamic breakdown voltage and then ended up with the knowledge gap, current knowledge gap and the goal of, of this work. Then I will show our test setup and our test results and analysis and last part will be summary and the next steps. Okay. So let's begin. So the single event over voltage ruggedness for gallium nitride hands have been, has been studied by many groups uh, recently, including our group. So it is usually characterized by this unclamped inductive, inductive switching, the UNS test circuit. So it has an inductor in series with the device and the test. So during the test, we first turn on the DUT. So the inductor is charged by the power supply, and once the inductor current reaches our desired value, we turn the DUT off so the energy stored in this inductor goes through the off-state DUT. So uh, for some of you, you may uh, feel this is familiar because this is the same circuit used to characterize the avalanche for power MOSFETs. But for gallium nitrogen hems, uh, as we can see from this structure, there is no PN junction connected to electrodes. So which means that there is no avalanche mechanism in gain hems. So instead, we use the term overvoltage to represent this test. And during the test, uh, the gain hems will transfer the surge energy from the inductor through the capacitive uh, charging and discharging. And the transient breakdown voltage of the gain hems will determine this failure. And in this slide, I will show some of our previous work. So basically, here shows the typical like UNS test waveform uh, for gain nitrate hems. So as we can see, this part, the so phase three, this is the LC resonance between the device output capacitance and loop inductor. And if we continue to increase the energy stored in the inductor, and we will have higher and higher uh, peak voltage here and eventually the device will fail catastrophically. So if you are interested in this work, uh, we have uh, some recent publications in IEEE and you can find it here. And basically from this single event UIS test, we found that the transient breakdown voltage determined the failure. And then we want to understand what uh, is the like, impact factor on that breakdown voltage, transient breakdown voltage. So we continue the test with this uh, various pulse width UIS test circuit. So basically, we extend the pulse width or the resonance period of this um, uh, LC resonance by either increasing the inductor value or either like adding another uh, capacitor in parallel with the device. So we have like um, longer and longer resonance period. So we are trying to like track what is the breakdown voltage like trend with increasing um, uh, resonance period? And here shows the results. So we can, show, we can see that with the increase of the pulse width from 25 nanoseconds all the way to 5 milliseconds, there is a consistent breakdown voltage decrease all the way from 1470 volts to like 1270 volts. It's around like 20 volts decrease of the breakdown voltage. And we define this change of the breakdown voltage with the uh, pulse width to be the dynamic breakdown voltage of gain hems. And we have another publication here, if, uh, and you can find more details of the test. Mm -hmm. So the, physic, uh, like the physical explanation of this dynamic breakdown voltage is this like trap impacted breakdown voltage in gain hems. So first of all, let me show the full breakdown voltage spectrum of a uh, gain hems we tested. So from, uh, from the pulse width is from 25 nanoseconds all the way to 2 seconds. So from this uh, breakdown voltage spectrum, we can see that the breakdown voltage like shows an increase with increasing pulse width and increasing temperature. And another thing is that we can see that for test like pulse width beyond 200 milliseconds, the breakdown voltage actually converges 
to the static breakdown voltage at long pulse width. So how to explain this? We performed some heat cap simulation. Like in, um, so we like uh, rebuild the structure uh, we have. Uh, we have tested in our work. And we simulated the electric field under different like conditions. So basically, the first case, VDS equals to 950 volts. And if we have no acceptor like trap in the buffer layer, or no field acceptor trap in the buffer layer, you can see that the electric field uh, at this uh, drain edge is relatively small. However, if we have some, if we add some traps in the buffer layer and with um, uh, density, like uh, active, uh, ionized trap density of 3.2, 10 to 16 centimeter uh, per cubic. So when the VDS is 950 volts, we can see that the uh, peak electric field at the drain side, at, on the drain, at the drain edge already reaches the critical electric field of gallium nitride, which means that um, even though we have the same VDS, but in the second case, with, when the trap goes in, mm -hmm. the device will show the catastrophic breakdown at a relatively low uh, voltage. So the short version of this uh, conclusion of this work is that the gain hemp breakdown voltage will decrease with more field traps in the buffer layer. So this is a trap in impacted breakdown voltage in gain nitrogen hemp. Mm -hmm. And also there are some like, uh, uh, I would say some experimental like track of this um, uh, of this ionized traps and the influence uh, it has on the um, breakdown voltage. And you can find some details in either our work in the IDM and uh, also in, in this work from another group as well. So um, um, we can see that there have been plenty of work done on the thing, uh, on the like the over voltage ruggedness of gain nitrogen hems, but we still have some knowledge gaps, especially the breakdown voltage at high frequency of switching. So we know that there is a famous like phenomenon in gain hems called the dynamic RDSL. So this means that the trap, the trapping and detrapping in gain hems will be uh, time dependent. So if we allow enough time for the, uh, as we can see on the figure, uh, on the right, the right hand side, if we allow some time for the traps to detrap, then we will see that um, the, dyna the dynamic breakdown will gradually decrease and similar thing for the breakdown voltage. The dynamic breakdown voltage of gain hemp is related to the trap as well. So it will be related to the, I would say the relaxation time, which means the stress, the frequency of the stress. So, but we know that the study, the most studies uh, on the gain hemp over voltage are like single event tests. And we have some repetitive testing results, but they are done, they were done with a relatively low frequency in kilohertz. So these tests may not reflect the true breakdown voltage in applications, especially like we have the switching frequency like 500 kilohertz or even up to like megahertz. So the goal of this work will be characterize gain hemp's dynamic breakdown voltage in continuous switching up to one megahertz. And let's let's take a look at our test setup, like how we design this test. So our idea is that we start with a buck converter, soft switch buck converter. The idea is that if we have, we intentionally put a parasitic inductance next to the top switch, and during the hard turn off, we will have a very high voltage overshoot triggered by this uh, like uh, uh, inductor, triggered by this inductor, like similar, actually similar to the US test. But the problem is that if we only have this inductor and if we have like a switching frequency, like at one megahertz, what will happen? So from the simulated waveform, we can see that we do have a very high voltage overshoot, but since we have a very like short uh, device turn off time, so the energy stored in this LR is not fully damped. So which means that once we turn on the device again, the current in the LR does not start from zero. It starts from a random value, like either positive or negative. So as a result, we can see that if we zoom out the waveforms, simulated waveforms, we will see many like unstable VDS, uh, VDS peak 
So this is what we don't want to see. And second thing is that we can see that besides the first very high voltage overshoot, we have multiple like high voltage pulses followed by this. And all these like pulses, uh, they have the voltage higher than the device rated voltage, so they potentially uh, stress the device as well. So this adds some difficulties in like analyze the testing results and analyze the failure mechanisms. So what we really want is a very clean high voltage overshoot and then quickly the, the like voltage goes back to the bus voltage and stays there. And we design this active clamping circuit. Similar thing here, we have this LR next to the top switch, but we put this active clamping circuit, uh, the, we call it the ACC here, and with um, like power resistor. So our, our thought is like, if we have this uh, active clamping circuit, working at, at the same switching frequency as a buck converter, like after the device is turned off, we do have a very high voltage overshoot, but as soon as the, uh, voltage, the first voltage overshoot ends, we turn on this clamping circuit, so the energy stored in the LR will be damped through this active clamping circuit pass and just uh, leave the device free from the further like uh, surge, uh, surge energy. And here shows the simulated waveforms. As we can see, if we tune the ACC with proper delay, we are able to obtain uh, the like one VDS pulse, and then the voltage goes back to the bus voltage, and we can see that we have a stable VDS peak. So this indicates that the energy is fully dissipating in ACC. And since then, we really don't know. Um, we, we, we would like to add some like flexibility in our like control or our like uh, in our test. So basically, uh, we, we really don't know like when we turn on the ACC, the uh, voltage, the VDS could be higher than the bus voltage and also it could be lower than the bus voltage. So we do need to, uh, the capability to block the voltage on both directions. So we put two sitting current MOSFETs back to back for this ACC design. And for the devices and the test, uh, in this work, the first candidate is a hybrid chain gate injection transistor, the HDGIT. Here shows, shows the structure. So uh, it has a recessed gate structure. Here shows a dominant gain layer between the pin and gate and the gain buffer. It's, it's very thin, like uh, 15 or 10 nanometers. And it, ha it has an omic uh, gate contact. And besides, it has another piece of PGAM electrically connected to the gene to suppress the dynamic RDSR phenomenon. And this device, it's, uh, it is rated uh, to like 600 volts and 31 amps. Sec second candidate is a shoggy barrier gate hand, SP the SP, SP hand. So basically, it has a, a shoggy gate contact and there's no gate recess structure. And uh, these devices, they come with like uh, 650 volts and 30 amps device rating. And let's take a look at our test setup. setup. So basically, this is our like test board. And as you can see here, we have the active timing circuit and uh, we have these two like through holes to mount the power resistors to help dissipate the energy. And we have this air core inductor here to trigger that high voltage overshoot. And this is our motherboard, and we have this dot card to insert into the motherboard. So the idea is that because like different manufacturers, they really have different design on the packages. So we design this kind of uh, uh, setup to accommodate like different package, package strategies. And here shows some sample waveforms. And as we can see, so, uh, this test uh, uh, setup with the ACC really works well, so we can see that for both like 20, uh, 200 kilohertz and 1 megahertz, we obtain our desired waveform. Like the VDS goes very high and then quickly goes back to the uh, bus voltage. And then let's take a look at our test results. So first, the failure boundary uh, for the HDGIT. So during the test, we first run, uh, we first uh, like uh, maintain the, uh, we keep the peak voltage to around 800 volts and check the temperature to make sure that the device will not fail thermally. So at that moment, the 
case temperature of the device is around 45 degrees C. So we make sure that it's not a thermal failure and we then record all the waveforms and then uh, we just uh, like show this like last uh, failure, uh, like last uh, waveform we, we can get before the failure and uh, mark it as a breakdown voltage. So we can see that for switching frequency at 200 kilohertz, we tested three devices to failure. And the uh, breakdown voltage, as shown here, and the average breakdown voltage, let's say it's around 1160 volts. And then we increase the frequency to 1 megahertz. And we also tested three devices to failure. And this time, the average like breakdown voltage is still around 1160 volts. And to compare with the single event test, we uh, we we then perform the uh, US test again, and to uh, and recorded the breakdown voltage under this test. So since we know that the breakdown voltage is related to the power width, so in this US test, we use the same air core inductor to trigger that voltage overshoot, and we use the same probe to measure the breakdown voltage. And what's the value at this time? Still 1160 volts. So basically, this HPGIT really gives a consistent breakdown voltage in various testing frequency. But things are different for this uh, SP amps. So basically, at 1 megahertz, three devices to failure, and we can see that the breakdown voltage is around uh, 1050 volts. And we decrease the switching frequency to 200 kilohertz. This time the breakdown voltage increased to 1200 volts. And then 2 kilohertz, three devices to failure. This time further increase to 1310 volts breakdown voltage. And for single event US test, we can see that three devices to failure. The breakdown voltage further increases to like 1365 volts. So there is a consistent decrease breakdown voltage with increasing uh, like st stress frequency. So how to explain this? So we know that uh, for gallium nitrogen hems, the trap will like influence the breakdown voltage. So as we can see, we can see from this uh, simulated waveforms, and also as we discussed before. So the similar thing for the high frequency test, we know that this high uh, uh, voltage overshoot will also enhance the trap the trapping effect in gallium nitrate hems. So if we have higher and higher, uh, if we have a high stress frequency, then from pulse to pulse, we will have a net accumulation of this air mass trap. Then we will have a dynamic breakdown voltage decrease, and also we will have a different, I would say, uh, net, like maximum um, trap density with increasing like uh, switching frequency or stress frequency. So this results in that consistent like decrease of breakdown voltage with increasing stress frequency. But for HPGIT, we know that we have this mixed P gain here. So under high VDS, this P gain will inject positive charges, inject holes into the gain buffer. And this injected host will compensate with the ion as traps, so which means that the trap density is controlled to a relatively low value. So as a result, in the TCAT simulation, we performed on the HDGIT with a mixed stream with a whole injection. We can see that with trap and without trap, the simulated breakdown voltage will also will always be 1160 volts. So the breakdown voltage is not influenced by that uh, switch of frequency that much for HDGIT. And now I would like to conclude uh, our work. So basically, we built up a novel converter-based test bed to characterize the high frequency over voltage readiness of commercial gain measure teams. And for the HDGIT, it shows a nearly frequency independent dynamic breakdown voltage, but for SP Hamped, it shows a decreasing dynamic breakdown voltage at higher, freq uh, higher frequency. The breakdown voltage at 2 kHz is around two, uh, 260 volts higher than that at 1 MHz. 
And this variation in breakdown voltage is well explained by the drive you can use the dynamic breakdown voltage in amps. And we provide some key guidelines for high frequency gain application, like what is the true breakdown voltage we can get uh, in like high frequency operations. And for the next steps, we will extend this study to other types of gain amps from like, more manufacturers to make sure that this phenomenon uh, is like universal or generic in commercial gain amps. And thank you very much for your attention and uh, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you.